what's up guys how you guys doing <laughs> you guys i just came back now um i went to pick my kids from school and now i am folding laundry my kids are downstairs i think they're having lunch so i want to just quickly fold my laundry and put it away but yeah when i went to pick my kids and we came back it was just me and them so i was you know changing them making sure they change and wear their you know normal house clothes and then Cora was complaining about something that was making her feel uncomfortable down there. So she wanted me to just check it out, right? And it just made me, I don't know, I just chuckled at the thoughts of how funny or how weird. Will I call you weird? I don't know that I'll call you weird. I mean, I don't have a boy. I haven't raised a boy before. So I don't know how much different it is to raise girls than it is to raise boys. Does that English construct make sense? I'm not sure. I don't know how much, well, I don't know the difference. I don't know how much difference it is to raise girls than it is to raise boys. Yes, it makes sense. Anyway, <laughs> I'm always guessing myself. Yeah, so I'm not really sure, but I know that raising girls is quite different. It's quite, you know, special. And at the same time, I feel like there are things that, you guys, sorry about the background noise. My windows are open. I need to air this room out. But yeah, I feel like there are things that I do personally that maybe other moms might not do or might not know about, or maybe you don't have girls, so you don't really do them, or maybe it's not just your cup of tea, even if you have girls. But anyway, there are things that I do as a girl mom, and I want to talk to you guys about those things. The major one that comes to my head is the fact that I check them down below, okay? <laughs> down below. I check them there down below from time to time, right? Now, I'm not checking for anything malicious, I mean, well, is it malicious as the word? I'm not checking them for, for anything like really terrible, but one of the reasons why I check them down there is to be sure that they are on point with their hygiene. Um, I don't bath my kids. I rarely bath my kids because Elizabeth does it most times. And when Amara is around, she does it as well. So I don't bath them. I mean, when they were younger, I was the one bathing them, but it got to, to I think once they cross that using baby bathtub age, once they cross that one year age, uh, I stop bathing my kids. So, okay, I do bath my kids once in a while, but when I bath them is when I wash their hair. So on hair days, maybe like once in two weeks or once in three weeks, when I actually wash their hair, deep condition and do all the rishi rishi, you know, after I finish doing all of that, I just bath them immediately after, make sure I clean them up very well. And then they now get dressed and we're we'll going to make their hair or make their hair the next day. So those are the only times that I would say that I actually bath my kids myself, right? But most times it's Elizabeth or Amarachi, mostly Elizabeth that does it because Amarachi is in school. So because of this, from time to time, I tell them to, oh yeah, lie down, open up. <laughs> I'm funny enough, my kids do these things without thinking. And it's just weird, like, not thinking back at the sight of it, you know, imagine just seeing three, three children lined up like this with open bum bum. It looks weird, but it's something I do from time to time to just check them to be sure they are on point with their hygiene. There is no weird, you know, discharge or weird smell or weird, you know, rashes or anything like that or weird or injury or something. Like, I always just check them. And also, aside even just checking them to physically see what's happening there, Sometimes I feel like they need to just air the place. I don't know if it's only me oh, that used to air my own place from time to time, okay? From time to time, I strip to nothing and I just face fan <laughs> and just air the place. Actually, I, don't, I do it a lot, actually. I do it a lot because I don't even wear undies to sleep. Yeah, I like the place to just, you know, breathe. So I don't wear undies to sleep except on my period now and stuff like that, okay? So because of it, almost every night, if I sleep, I'll, at some point, I'll open the place and on fan, just fan there to just <laughs> just enjoy the fan but yeah so i do it for them from time to time and they actually like it you know they they look forward to it sometimes for no reason they'll come and miss me and say mommy i'm feeling hot and i tell them yeah open open and i put fan <laughs> you know put fan on them yes it might sound weird to other moms i don't know if anybody there can relate to but for me personally i like to put fan there just to be sure there's no weird smell or you know just allow the place breathe i beg before you know something you start having bacteria infection and all that let's the whole place breathe um but yeah so i also you know anytime i'm talking about it or touching them there or checking it i always ask them okay 
I just try to go over the rules again because these kids, it's not about teaching them once or even 10 times. It's not about teaching them. It's, it's a continuous teaching until they are old enough to really grasp what you are teaching them and to remember it. Not even just to grasp it, but to remember it. So, you are teaching them about the rules. Nobody should touch you here. Nobody should even look at it. Nobody should tell you to open up to look. Nobody should ever try it, okay? It's only me that can do it and, you know, if I am in the room and I tell you to do it, maybe there's a doctor involved in here. But anything aside that, don't do it. If anybody tells you to do this, come and meet me. If anybody puts their hand there, come and meet me. What is this place? You know, I just teach them the name. <laughs> uh, 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 Sophia trying to say vagina is one of the funniest things ever. Like, it's so funny her trying to say it. But sometimes I still teach her. Like, I teach her the difference. This is your vagina and this is your butt, okay? Or your, I will call it your bum bum. So this is your bum bum, this is your vagina. And I say, don't touch it. Don't allow anybody to touch it. If anybody wants to touch it, what do you say? She will say, don't touch it, you know. For Sophia's own case, I'm not uh, I'm not saying, I don't think that she's old enough to really like, if somebody wants to touch it, to really tell the person, don't touch it all of that. I'm not sure, but I'm just doing it just in case, okay? I don't know when her brain will reach that development. So let me start now until it reaches there and we'll just, you know, continue. But I think she can. I think she can, Cha. She can, actually. But for Cora and Ava, they know about it. So, yeah. So that's one of the things that I do for my kids. I'm not sure other moms do. But it's something that I think is okay for you to do. I don't know. But for me and my household, I think it's something that is good and beneficial to always check them down there. And to always, like, know the anatomy of the place. <laughs> you know, check it out. Make sure there's no weird smell. There's no itchy. There's no um rashes there's no um weird discharge or you know or injury or whatever okay so that even if your child does not tell you if anything happens at least you go use your eyes see them okay if they don't tell you you go see them um yeah another thing i do is i always declutter i don't know if i showed you guys clip of that or maybe i'll show you guys now but i always declutter my kids clothing you guys my kids have a lot of clothes. I don't even know when I used to buy these clothes, okay? So yeah, from time to time, I try to declutter their clothes and just arrange everywhere, arrange their wardrobe, just make sure that their things are organized. If not, this house is going to be run over by clothes or with clothes. And, you know, and they'll still not have anything to wear. Typical girl, girl uh, uh, behavior. <laughs> yeah, you have so many clothes, but you don't have anything to wear for, you know, when you want to go out. So... That's why I always like go through their things, clear everything, sort everything out, pair some clothes for them. So that when they come back from school like this now, they can just go take a pair of clothes or a single dress and just wear without me trying to go and check what are, what are you supposed to wear, what can you wear. No, they can dress themselves up. They actually do dress themselves up now. The only problem I have with people like Ava is fashionista. So the home clothes she doesn't like to wear. Why there's some clothes that she wears until? Like she wears them tire. So those clothes that she wears a lot, once it gets to the stage where I can't stand it anymore, I remove those clothes entirely. Like, I remove them and keep them. Later, I might bring them out, though. But I remove them and keep them for, like, a month until she gets over that phase or, you know, she doesn't like something else. And then the cycle continues. But, yeah, I sort through their clothes quite often um, just to help me, you know, put things in order. Then another thing I find quite fascinating about raising girls, again, is the fact that, you know... I have to be mindful about their emotions. I don't know if boys are like that. Is it really a girl thing? I feel like when girl, when children are sm a little before when they are prepubescent, I feel like girls and boys have similar temperaments when they've not yet, um, you know, when they've not yet hit puberty and all of that. I feel like oh, I'm not sure. Those of you who are uh, which name they call her now, behavioral therapist or behavioral psychologist or uh, child development people, let me know. If two boys and girls have the same temperaments when they are still babies, personally, I feel like they do when they are still younger anyway. But maybe as they grow older, it changes. But with my kids, I don't know if it is, again, I am trying to say, I don't know if it's a girl thing or if it's a children thing. But my children are quite sensitive. All of them, including Eva. I used to think that Eva was Odeshi. Eva is not Odeshi anything. Eva is just, Eva is Odeshi for physical pain, but for emotional Eva is quite emotional, if not more emotional than Cora herself. That's the funny part. Um, it's just that the way she expresses her emotion is different. So she keeps she keeps things in. Um, she's more reserved and she's more quiet. And she doesn't like being accused wrongly um, and all of that. But she's quite emotional as well. Um, yeah, so 
I have to be mindful of their emotions when I'm trying to talk to them or trying to correct them. I have to be very careful about the things I say to them. I don't joke some kind of jokes with them because I don't want them to internalize these things and then it do not follow them. So for instance, I don't talk about Cora's weight in her presence. Um, I don't tell her, oh, you're too fat or why are you fat or anything. And if someone tells her that or if someone mentions it, you know, in her presence, I don't like it because I don't want her to internalize this thing as her seeing herself as fat. And she has made comments like that sometimes, like, oh, you know I'm fat, you know Eva is slim. I'm like, you're not fat, actually. And funny enough, she's not fat, but because she's on the bigger side, like, bigger, big, she's not even bigger than her age mates. She's, she's just on the bigger side. Like, she's age appropriate, let me put it that way. Ha, <sighs> I give up, I beg, I have to close my windows because me, I'm very sensitive to sound. Like, I don't like when my audio doesn't sound good. Even when I'm watching other people's videos, I don't like crappy sounding audio. So, I can't deal, man. I have to close my windows. Uh, so, yeah, the visuals, everywhere is going to be, everywhere is quite dark. But I just try to tweak some lighting stuff a bit. But I'm almost done, Sha. Anyway, so, uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, their emotions. I have to be very careful about their emotions. I have to be careful about what I say around them and what I allow other people to say around them. Um, I don't think anybody's come and give my child uh, insecurity issues or whatever. So, if I cannot really control what they hear, I try to make sure that behind the scenes, I'm like, you know, giving them the talk to try and just make sure that they don't develop insecurities and all of that, you know, start feeling somehow um yeah so i tried to talk to them yesterday cora was complaining about you know someone that tried to bully her um and it's not well anyway i'm not going to detail her but basically the person was trying to let her tell her that oh your mom is not going to come back your mom is not going to come and pick you you stay in school and cora interpreted it as you know they were insulting her and telling her that i will not come back i'm going to allow her because I, I wasn't around yesterday you know and i didn't like it when she was explaining to me i didn't like it especially because you know anyway I didn't like it, but I had to not give her the talk. And, and I told her, see, Cora, whenever you perceive, because she kept saying this insult, I said, I won't call it an insult. I mean, they're just trying to tease you and, you know, get you to, to feel bad. Because I know Cora, she's someone that takes things to heart easily. And because of it, people try to, people like that are more susceptible to bullying. Because when people see that what they're saying gets to you, or when you're very likable, very, not likable, when you're very friendly, very, you know, out there, people tend to try to bully you more. So I try to just talk to her and tell her that, see, um, anytime you feel uncomfortable and somebody's trying to bully you, remove yourself from the situation. But, you know, when they're there, if, if you cannot remove yourself from the situation, ask them why, okay? That's one thing I've learned. Confront, in confronting, not just bullies, people that talk anyhow, ask them why. Why did you say that? You know, why did you have to say that? Like, it's, it's my sound, like, what's that? But it's actually very um effective as a tool for instance if somebody's trying to bully you you know ask the person why why are you why are you trying I, what, what i told her to do anyway is that ask them why are you trying to bully me are you a child of satan are you a devil are you happy making other people uncomfortable that's what i told her to ask the person okay she was looking at me i said yes if anybody's trying to bully you trying to make you you know feel less than or feel uncomfortable or make you feel sad ask the person why i do derive joy from me being sad you derive joy from me being happy why are you saying this are you saying are you a child of the devil are you an evil person i thought that to ask the person yes ask them ask them are you a child of devil because if it's only children of devil that uh, you know derive pleasure from making other people feel bad about themselves or you know make someone feel uncomfortable or something it's only a child of devil that will do that so ask them are you a child of the devil you know and i keep telling her to so don't do it to other people because yeah sometimes too the thing she does to eva that to me it's it's it, it um it can count as bullying as well it, vice versa some things eva does to cora some things cora does to eva some things sophia does to the two of them <laughs> sophia used to finish the two of them some things she does to cora and, and eva that you know i can count as bullying as well so i try to tell her i try to let her know that you know the home things are not acceptable behavior don't allow people do it to you and don't do it to other people okay it's a learning process as well um uh, it's not something that it's not something that they are going to learn overnight but it's something that i'm actually just trying to work on them work on their self-esteem i always tell them you're beautiful you're gorgeous sometimes cora might just you know come to give me something or come to tell me something and i'm like ah you are such a beautiful girl. Oh my goodness. Do you know that you're such a beautiful girl? Do you know that you're so pretty? You're so you're so gorgeous. Do you know that? She'll not be like, yes, I know. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, these are things I do from time to time to just try and boost their self-esteem, um, you know, try to make them feel good, try to make them feel pretty, and try to also let them know that nobody is finer than you in this world. Nobody is smarter than you. Another thing that Cora does now, because she's she's growing, she tells me things like, oh, mommy, can I take my device to school? That is her tab. And I'm like, no. Tab, okay. Why are you taking your tab to school for? What reason? Should not be like, eh, some people in my class are bringing their tabs. And I'm like, you have to be different. You have to be special. You are unique. You are different. You cannot be like them. If they are bringing their tabs to school, be like, nah, I can't bring my tabs to school. I can't bring my tabs to school because you know, I don't want to. That kind of thing. I should tell her that. Just try and be different. You don't have to do what people are doing just because people are doing it. Yes, you like playing with your tab. Wait, when you get back home, you play with your tab. You don't have to take your tab to school because every other person taking their tab to school, okay? Especially when it wasn't like school that I requested. They're not using it for anything. It's just show off, basically. I want her to know that you don't have to try to show off to anybody. Like, nobody rich. They know who, who, who is their father? Who is their father? They know rich. Nobody. And because they've gotten to that age where... A lot of, you know, kids like to brag, you know, talk about, oh, I have this, I have that. My mother bought me this, my mother bought me that, my father bought me this, my father has this, my mother has that. We have this, we have that, you know, things like that. I try to tell Cora that, see, first of all, okay, what people have in their houses is not your business, okay? Like, you are happy, you are comfortable, you have everything you need in this life. So you should be very grateful about what you have. You don't need to show off to anybody. They are only showing off to you because they need your approval. You don't need anybody's approval. <laughs> And that's the truth. People that show up, show up because they need your approval. Like, if I don't need your approval, it's like me going to a random stranger on the street and not telling the person, see, I have a new phone or something. Like, no, I don't need the person's approval. But if I go to maybe my friend and be like, ah, see, I have a new phone here. It's because I need her approval. I need her to be like, wow, I need her to, you know, see me as, oh, privileged or something to make me feel better. So I still tell her that, see, you don't need anybody's approval, okay? They need your approval. That's what they're telling you. And when they tell you, just congratulate them and move on, okay? Anyway, all this one I talk, she'll still feel bad about some things, okay? I know that she's a human being, so she's still going to feel bad about some things. It's okay, but just I'm just putting things in place to counter how much or how bad she feels about certain things. You know, like not having certain things. Like, no, you don't have to feel so bad. Like, yes, it's okay to want it's okay to want certain things, but you don't have to feel so bad that you don't have it. Yeah, and another thing again is living by example. I mean, they are girls, I'm a woman, so I'm a girl, please. <laughs> I remember when my husband was always having this conversation and he would be like, you don't know you're a woman. I'm like, no, I'm not a woman. I'm a girl, please. I'm a young girl. Okay, I'm going to be 35 this year. And I'm like, ah, please, oh, please. I'm still a young girl. Come on, come on, woman, call woman. Yeah, I'm not a woman. <laughs> I'm a girl. I'm a lady. Anyway, I'm a woman now. And, you know, the best example, the best teacher is, ex not, not experience. <laughs> The best way to teach your kids is by living by example, okay? It's by whatever you want to teach them, leave it yourself. If you want to teach them to eat well, you eat well. If you want to teach them not to be on their phones all the time or their gadgets or their gadgets all the time, then you ma drop your own phone or drop your own gadgets, okay? Then you have to have a high self-esteem yourself. If you want them to be kind, you want them to be gentle, you want them to be friendly, you want them to be peaceful, you want them to be humble. Whatever it is you want to teach your kids, they are best going to learn it from you, from how you conduct yourself, okay? It's not by your words. Your words don't mean much if your actions are, you know, going in the opposite direction, okay? I'm always very conscious about their feeding, their eating habits, and, you know, their weight and all of that. Because, again, as much as I want them to be healthy and all of that, I have to remember that they are also girls. And uh, in fact, it's not even just human beings, okay? You are judged by how you look. It is what it is. It is. It is what it is. <laughs> it's not you that is going to come and change it. Anybody come and say it's not good. It's vanity. It's like, eh, eh, it is what it is. It's not you that's going to change it, okay? From time immemorial, people have been judged about how, by how I be based on how they look. And till Jesus comes, people are going to still be judged based on how they look. Okay, so it is important to me that my kids fall on the, they're already pretty cute, okay, they're my children are already, my children are already beautiful, melanin, you know, princesses, right? But at the same time, we want to be pretty and just normal. I don't want, I'm not doing fat acceptance here, I'm not doing skinny acceptance here, okay? It's not about uh, accept your body at any size. Eh, 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 eh. There's a conventionally and medically acceptable size. <laughs> And I want them to remain at that size, okay? Not only for their health benefits, but for their social, you know, what they call it now. Social points, okay? Social currency, okay? For their social well-being, I don't want my child to be looking, you know, either too fat or either too skinny, okay? It is what it is. 
the same thing with their I'm a bit vain about their look as well in terms of you know body composition and all of that okay if any of my children has crooked teeth I'm going to fix it okay as soon as possible you have a curved leg my, my kids their legs are good anyway but let's say my child was born with bow legs and stuff like that I'm going to fix it ASAP Sophia had um hernia yes hernia she even has two actually one in her navel one in her, in her upper belly but the upper belly oh you don't really notice it until maybe she has overeating then you can now see like a small protruding thing in her tummy but in her navel she has big navel as well once she turns five years like this, if those things don't close, she's gonna go close them, okay? Yes, I want my child to have flat tummy with very nice belly button, okay? I'm not saying she's going to walk up and down now showing, showing everybody her tummy, but when she has to show her tummy, her tummy should look on point, okay? Yeah, so I'm going to be vain about it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care, but yeah, to the best of my ability. I mean, there are things about your kids that you can't change. You can't change. I don't even have anything I want to change in them looks-wise, except maybe... If they have like crooked teeth and stuff like that, eh? Hey, or what else? What else? I don't know. It's not that thing I want to change in my kids' appearance. Is there anything? No. Um, their hair as well. I want them to have nice hair. Um, Sophia and Eva, you know, they are okay. But Cora, so now I'm transitioning Cora back to natural hair. Simply because now she's older, she's staying better when making her hair, and I'm sure she will understand, you know having to endure a little pain for her hair. Now she can understand it, but then, <laughs> as I when I text last Cora's hair, there's no way we could have gone past that level without text lasting her hair. It would have either been I cut her hair and everybody rest, or I text last it and I went for text laxing, okay? In fact, the reason why I went for text laxing is still for vanity's sake, okay? I could have cut all, I could have cut all her hair off and just rested, but for vanity's sake, I wanted her to have nice hair. That's why I text her hair. So, Yes, I'm vain about my kids' appearances and my kids, you know, everything. I'm vain about it to the best of my ability, okay? Every other thing I leave it for God, but the one I can control, I'm going to control it, okay? I'm not one of those men that will carry their children for plastic surgery. I'm not one of those women, no. But I'm just saying that things that you can control, cooked teeth, skin issues, like <laughs> any skin parallel, ah, the way I, I examine my children, eh? Any skin parallel like this. <laughs> straight up we are dealing with it they are all going to have their skincare products from head to toe they already have their body sprays and all of that but their body cream and all those things when they when they when once they get to that stage where they can do things themselves everybody's going to have everything complete 12 12 uh, step korean skincare <laughs> not 12 step okay but the basics everybody's going to have sunscreen everybody's going to have face moisturizer everybody's going to have face wash and everybody's going to have a serum okay whether it's vitamin c serum or hyaluronic or niacinamide or you know um or even this cos rx um, snail muscelin whatever whatever i'm going to buy i think, I'll, I think that, that's what i'll go for but they're going to have the basics then their body they're going to have the normal they have it now anyway but i mean like each person having their own uh, lotion oil and all of that okay another thing i do and this is right now very long another thing i do is that i make sure i change their undies as often as possible like once i see any small cuts or tear or stain or whatever i just throw it away i always tell my girls because sometimes i don't check it until one day i'll now see that somebody has torn on that way and i'm like these people don't know at this stage that I don't tolerate such. I don't want to see any talk. How much is on that way now? How much is pants? I don't know why people see pants or something that you should wear, wear till it dies. I don't know why people see pants like that to me. Man, once I see any small tear, any small cut, any small stain, please throw it in the bin, okay? In the bin. Funny enough, I even change their on their way underwears. I change their panties more often than I change mine, okay? Mine is because of sentiment reasons. I might just like one and I'm like, I'm or some and I'm like, I don't want to change them, okay, until I find something similar or something better. But for my kids' own, once I just see anything that is off, please, in the bin, okay? Because I don't want my children to come be wearing tear tear pants. <laughs> or anything like that but yeah those are the things i do for my kids now that i don't know if it's controversial or if it sounds odd or you know if it's something you want to try for your own kids or if it sounds good but whatever the case is let me know in the comment section if you have the ones that you do for your own kids or if you do any of these things that i just mentioned let me know in the comment section thank you so much for watching this odd video the lighting is so annoying i hope the audio is good but yeah i'll see you all in my next video bye guys <laughs>